Um, as far as uh, today, a couple things I want to go through, through with you guys today. Um, this should be a, an interesting one here because we have a new release that came out this morning. Uh, we haven't officially announced it to the masses, uh, so you guys will likely be the first ones to see it here. So pretty excited about that. Um, I should be able to get done here in 20 minutes or less to respect your busy seasons and your times here throughout the day. A couple things I want to go through again and maybe recap for some of you if you've attended before, uh, but something valuable for all of you new folks here. Uh, within the reservation software itself, guys, if you come up here and you click on this question mark here, uh, and you come down to this make a suggestion and submit your ideas and vote, what this is here is, this is what we call our user voice community. And this is where you as users, clients of this solution can be heard, uh, share ideas, uh, suggest new things to happen or improvements to usability or features or functionality. Um, so what happens is, is as you sign up as a user here, you get 20 votes for your account. And those accounts can be used to vote on your ideas or others' ideas. Uh, you cannot vote more than uh, three votes on any one particular idea. And after we uh, actually come out or release or solve uh, that actual idea, you get those votes returned to you. Um, so it's not a, a use it and lose it kind of scenario. Uh, so you'll see here as an example, this very top idea, the most voted on idea from our customer base, develop a, a, or use an off the shelf report generator. We've been working on this for a while here and we're slowly releasing it out and we're almost uh, completed with that thing. So be on the lookout for that thing. And some of you may have gotten a sneak peek email as we slowly release this out to the masses. So this is a good example, most voted thing. And we've uh, started that thing and it's in uh, process now and, and soon to be done here. So that's an example. So please give us your idea, search for other ideas, vote on ideas of things that are very, very important to you and you will get heard here guys. Uh, so thank you very much for doing that. Um, the other thing I want to show you here, especially for you new guys is if you click on this bell in this upper right hand corner, this gives you access to the bigger features that we release that we talked about here as well as we cover all release notes and all deployments out here um, under this cloud updates tab, which is everything from features, usability, performance enhancements, bugs, things of that nature. And then we always record all of our uh, webinar sessions and we post them in here. So that way you guys can see them if you gotta leave early or you miss anything. Uh, so that way you don't feel left out. We make sure that we continue that education uh, to all of our customers and all of our user base here. So appreciate that stuff. Okay, uh, so what I want to show you guys today is um, for those of you that have been on the product, using the product, as you know, in order to make a reservation, you need to navigate to the occupancy map. You need to click and drag on the occupancy map and you need to select a person. And this is how you make a reservation, okay? Well, for those of you that are running very high occupancy or those of you that have many units or lots of reservations, you've likely run into issues where the occupancy map takes a little while to load. Um, and if you're not familiar, the reason why that is, is, is we load everything on this screen, okay? So if you've got 30 units and you're showing the month or multiple weeks and you've got a gazillion reservations on here, we're loading these things one by one. So it can become very sluggish or slow things down, okay? Well, on our list of to-dos, we've got two things, and in essence, we're killing two birds with one stone. So in the upper left-hand corner, you see this new button, and this button can be accessed from any screen within this reservation software. So whether you're on the reservation screen or an invoice screen or wherever you're at, you're on the dashboard, you'll have access to this new reservation button. Now, if you notice when I click on it, I, ha I now have something new that pops up here. I can create a new reservation or mark something out of service without engaging with the occupancy map at all, okay? So when I say two birds, one stone, this has two benefits. One, it allows me to create a new reservation uh, from anywhere within the reservation software without having to engage with the occupancy map. So that's a great benefit uh, for everyone. And then the second thing it does uh, is it allows you to avoid using the occupancy map in general where it can be slow.
sluggish and you're busy season and you've got a lot of rooms or a lot of reservations and things slow down and people in line waiting to check in or check out or, or looking into your soul and wondering what the heck's taking you so long. Well, you'll no longer have to deal with that. So I encourage you guys to get very familiar uh, with this new feature that we've released today. Uh, start practicing with it, playing around with it and using it uh, in your day-to-day check-ins, check-outs, okay? So I'm gonna walk you through it here. So when I click on new, as an example, I'm on the dashboard and I wanna create a new reservation. If I've got a phone call or I've got a walk-in, and I'm gonna select that here. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna bring me to this, what I'm gonna call a new reservation wizard, okay? So historically, that would have migrated you to the occupancy map, but the whole point of this is to keep you off the occupancy map and allow you through uh, any section, any page of the reservation software to create a new reservation. So the very first thing that it's asking me to do is it's asking me to select my arrival and departure night so that I can search for available units. So by clicking on the calendar here, I can then navigate through the calendar, however it is that I want to do that, right? And then I can make my selection of my arrival and my departure. So it's a two-click process. So I'm going to do that again for you guys. So when I click the arrival calendar box, I then navigate to the appropriate dates. My first click of the mouse is my arrival, and my second click is my departure. Okay, and it's going to auto fill those things in for me here on the calendar, and then I'm going to hit search for availability. Well, within my reservation software here, based on my test query, uh, arriving on the 15th, departing on the 16th, it's showing me that I have 17 available units, and it's listing these units available for me down below. Now, from this view here, a couple of things I want you to pay attention to. We tried to put as much information here as humanly possible so that way you don't have to navigate to the occupancy map, right? So we see the name of the unit. We see the capacity of the unit. We see uh, that base rate associated for, the, for that unit and any minimum night stays here. So as an example, you'll see here these top units, Queen, Pontoon, Vineyard, Broken Arrow, and Big Apple, they have three night minimums. Whereas the Victorian, Wildflower, Aquarium, Golden Nugget, Sportsman, and so on, they only have a one night minimum, okay? So we tried to bring that right into your face. So if someone is saying here, hey, I wanna stay for one night, as is my example, well, if I've got a three night minimum and I'm not willing to offer a one night reservation, then I stay away from these units, right? Okay, so pretty self-explanatory stuff. Now, what we hope is very user-friendly, in order to add or select a particular unit, all we do is we simply click this Add button, okay? And then you're going to get a dialog box over here on the right-hand side. Now, before we engage with this, you'll notice here, I also have the ability to remove. So maybe I meant to click the wildflower and not the aquarium based on what this guest has told me, or maybe they're a weekly guest, they love the wildflower unit. So it's very easy to remove that unit and then reselect a new unit, which is now the wildflower. The other thing I also want you to pay attention to, for those of you familiar with the occupancy map of the single unit reservation mode versus the group unit reservation mode, I can now add multiple units to this reservation, thus making this a group reservation. So you see all of those units here, and now I have the option to remove a unit over here, as well as remove a unit over here. So we're giving you multiple options and hope that this is as user-friendly as humanly possible for you to not only add or remove units or engage this uh, single unit into a group reservation by selecting multiple units, okay? The other thing I want you guys to pay attention to here is you can also use this uh, as it was indicated, let me just close this down and show you again. As it was indicated on this new feature wizard, widget, I can either make a reservation or mark out of service. So I want you to pay attention to that here as I select some dates here and search for my availability. I can add particular units that I want to mark out of service for whatever reason, and I can do that right here from this screen and continue on, and they will be marked out of service on my occupancy map. So again, giving you the option from any section, any page within the reservation software without having to navigate or deal with the occupancy map, 
you can make the reservation or as I just explained, more genetic surface, okay? So pretty easy stuff. So let me just select uh, one unit here. Let me jump back to the quote. So now we're moving on. This person does want the aquarium unit uh, for the one night selected. And now in my right hand dialog box, I can now interact. I can select different rates. If I don't want the rack rate, which is my default rate on the occupancy map, if I offer any types of packages, I can easily add those packages here as well. Uh, if I charge or track for additional guests above my base cap or what my rate offers uh, in way of guests, I can add those here. As well as, as you're used to on the occupancy map, guys, we can apply any discounts here, percentage or fixed amount, uh, exempt any taxes or anything like that, as well as we can uh, override the rate manually, uh, remove anything that's standard uh, here on any a reservation or rate plan that you have. So very easy, very full functioning. It should be very similar to what you experience on the occupancy map uh, and what you're used to in making reservations. So although we have a new reservation wizard, a new out of service wizard, where you don't actually interact with the uh, occupancy map itself, you still have the full featured functionality as well as all the information it is that you're accustomed to receiving when you're making these reservations for marketing units out of service, right? So let me just show you what it looks like as I continue on. So it's going to be similar to what you get from the occupancy map. So think click and drag, uh, select the units and the dates. And then I'm going to jump in here and I'm either going to search my database for the guest or I'm going to add them as a new guest. So in this example, I'm going to add myself. It's going to take me to their records to see any historical information, notes, contact information, things of that nature. And as I progress on, I get the option to confirm with a credit card or book without uh, a credit card. So I'm just going to do that here. So you'll notice I've got a success signal. This reservation was saved here. So as I close this down here, and then I jump back to the occupancy map, and I head out to those dates in the future where that reservation was made. If I recall correctly, it was somewhere in this ballpark. I thought it was, maybe it wasn't. Okay, maybe I, maybe I made it for a different date there. Uh, but nonetheless, guys, you see here, now, if I move on and I'm in a different section, let's say I'm in my uh, invoices section, or no, maybe a better example is a people section. So maybe I was searching for a guest for whatever reason. You'll notice I still have this new reservation uh, option widget up here. Click on this, add new reservation, and it immediately jumps me into being able to select arrival departure dates, search for availability all that information, add whatever units it is that I'd like to, move on with that reservation, add my person. So you see again here, guys, the flexibility and the convenience of being able to do this from any screen uh, without having to actually interact um, with the occupancy map there at all, okay? Okay, pretty fancy stuff there. Um, the other thing I wanna show you, I wanna show you one more thing here, guys, in the next three minutes and try to get it done here in 20 minutes is, um, I've been getting a lot of calls here from new customers that aren't familiar with the reports and how to view their occupancy. So I wanted to cover that here today as well. So as you navigate to the uh, report section here, guys, um, the best report to get that information will be our revenue by unit report. So revenue, unit revenue by unit. And on this report, it automatically defaults for the then current month, but you can change these dates for whatever date range you're looking for. But what this report is going to give you guys is it's going to list all your units one by one, okay? And then what it's going to do is it's going to show you the total nights that that unit was available, less any out of service nights. And it's going to show you the total nights that that unit was booked during that time frame, okay? And then here is your occupancy percentage. So not only is it going to show you room by room, but it'll show you your total. Now the totals can get a little wonky if some of you are using buffer units or you use a unit slot for parking a slot, or maybe you use a unit for meeting rooms, right? So it can get a little bit wonky on the totals uh, because maybe you don't want that to be reflected, but you can always see your then individual unit occupancy. So 
So some other values of this particular report, you'll see your ADR, you'll see your REVPAR revenue per available room, your total revenue, any fees, any taxes, and then the totals there. So this is a really strong report, guys, to be able to get that information. And as you'll notice in the upper right-hand corner, you can either print that report out or you can export that report to a cell a CSV, okay? Um, so this is a, a very powerful report here. And one of the values of, uh, of this particular report, guys, that a lot of people find uh, that you may not be familiar with is you have the ability to, this is what we call a temporal uh, report, where you have the ability to get a time machine and you get to go look at data based on that was entered on or before a certain day. So this is a good report if you're trying to see maybe some pacing or some trends. So I can say, show me my revenue in June on or before a date before June, right? So I get in a time machine and I go look. So in essence, it's going to show me all my advance uh, reservations uh, that happened before the actual stay occurred or the month itself. So I can get in my time machine by adjusting this date here. Um, so a lot of accountants and people like to see that for pacing and trending. So again, the whole purpose of this report that I wanted to show today was how you get your occupancy and ADR and things like that broken down on individual units. So again, within the reporting section under revenue by unit, this is where you would achieve that information. Um, so to recap here, guys, today, uh, if you'd like to share with us feedback, ideas, new features, uh, enhanced what it is that we have, you engage with this question mark and you jump out to make a suggestion, submit your idea and vote. You've got to be logged in as a user, which you can engage with in the upper right hand corner. So you can do that there. Uh, for those of you uh, that need to leave early or can't attend every, attend every webinar by clicking on the bell icon, you can see the really important features that impact everyone, all the release notes, as well as all the recorded webinars by history. And then again, guys, to help you out, regardless of what section or page you're on within our software, and for those of you that run high occupancy and tons of reservations, lots of rooms to avoid interacting with the occupancy map and any sluggishness you may experience, you can now engage with the new uh, reservation or out of service widget in the upper left hand corner. Select your arrival and departure dates, one click arrival, second click departure, search for availability, see all your available units, the capacity, uh, the base rate, any uh, uh, specific minimum night stays that are required, easily add and remove units or add multiple units to make it a group reservation, right? can easily come up here and mark multiple units out of service for whatever reason, uh, continue on with that particular reservation, search for the guests, et cetera, right? And then lastly here, the last thing we covered, reports. If you're looking for occupancy reports and then revenue by unit to go ahead and get that information. So hope that was valuable, guys. Again, my name is Josh Wise. I'm the VP of, of Client Services here at Redstream. So if you have ideas, if you want to cover things, if you're not sure how something works, if you don't like the way something works, it's too many clicks, uh, would love to hear that feedback from any and all of you. So please feel free to either email me or call me directly. Uh, we're, we're a small company here, just like you guys are. And so uh, our claim to fame is our customer service. Uh, so we definitely want to make sure that we're taking good care of you and that your voice can be heard at any point in time. Um, okay. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. I greatly appreciated it. Uh, if you guys had questions that I wasn't able to get to here, because I'm trying to keep it in that 20 minute window today, I'll do my best to reply before you drop out here uh, or shoot you an email directly. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful day. Appreciate it. Take care. Bye-bye.